Okay, welcome back to Kale's workshop. In this one, I'm just doing a quick oxyacetylene torch, setting it up, and all I'm doing is going through the oxygen and acetylene adjustments, showing you a neutral flame, oxidizing flame, and a carbonizing flame. And it's hard to really tell what's going on here, so I'm gonna re, uh, go over this in, in the next clip. But that's what I'm doing right here. And then I end on a neutral flame where you see that well-defined uh, blue inner cone there for your neutral flame. And then I'll just show you that the acetylene gas is red, oxygen is green. Okay, so if you look here, this is the refrigeration and air conditioning technology book. I think this is seventh edition. I'll put a link for the latest edition and where you can get this book if you're interested. But uh, just to go over the flames real quick, um, if you look here, you've got A, B, and C. And each of these represents a different type of flame. If you look up here, you've got figure 738. That's an air acetylene flame which basically means um, just acetylene gas is burning here. If you look at figure 739, you've got an oxyacetylene flame. So what you're after is a neutral flame. So if you look here, it says a neutral flame should be used for most operations. Uh, figure 740 shows you the photos of a neutral flame, a carbonizing flame, which would be too much acetylene and an oxidizing flame, too much oxygen. Um, so this is what you end up with. And what you're after is that neutral flame with that well-defined inner cone that you see here. Uh, B is a carbonizing flame. And then C, of course, is your oxidizing flame. So what you want is a, a nice neutral flame uh, for all your brazing and, and uh, retrofitting, all that kind of stuff. So, just to reiterate, here is your regulator for your uh, oxygen. So, one side will show you what your pressure is set to. The other side will show you uh, what type of pressure you have in the bottle. Same with your gas. So, hopefully that was helpful. Um, and then, of course, if you use either an oxidizing or a carbonizing flame, your results are going to be varied and probably not what you're looking for. You'll have too much uh, oxidation uh, and things of that nature. So, again, what you're after is that neutral flame for your brazing. And you can adjust that, as I was showing you in the uh, video, through your uh, gas and, and uh, oxygen knobs on your torches so just play around with that and get it set to where you want it and i think you'll be just fine with that so again thank you to those that responded and and asked for clarification on the video uh, i enjoy making these i'll get some more acetylene gas i'm out right now and then i'll try to do a video on actual brazing and see if that's helpful for you as well all right so one other thing I didn't talk about was the process of actual brazing. It's good to see it in pictures uh, instead of always seeing it live. But if you look at this, it's trying to explain to you where to put your flame and when to apply your solder. Well, the process is the same for, for solder and brazing. Uh, but if you look here, it says the proper procedure for heating uh, a joint and applying solder or in our case, brazing material, brazing rod. You start by heating the tubing. Keep the flame moving. Do not point the flame into the end uh, of the fitting. So here you see some different types of fittings. Uh, well, 90 degree fitting and your, your copper pipe going into it. So it says touch the solder uh, to the joint to check for proper heat. So what they're saying is if your brazing rod starts to stick to the copper, uh, you're almost at critical temperature. And it says, do not melt the solder with the flame. Uh, it's the heat of the, the copper that's actually uh, melting the filler material. Um, so you don't want to point your flame directly into your fitting. 
uh, you want to put it on the male portion of the fitting uh, and keep your flame moving uh, slowly so that you don't burn a hole in your copper. Um, so there's something called uh, capillary attraction or capillary action that is what actually pulls that filler material into the joint. Um, so let's go back and look really quick uh, at an explanation here. So if you look at this, it's, it's like when you stick two pieces of glass down in a cup of water. The water is pulled in between the two pieces of glass. So this is your capillary attraction or, or action. And here it is in the book. It just talks about how it's drawn into the uh, close fitting space by capillary attraction. So you see your filler material being sucked down into the cup of the joint. And that's what's going on when you're brazing. Okay. So hopefully that's helpful. Uh, gives you a little insight into the process of brazing and how it all takes place. Uh, again, if you uh, found this useful, please like and subscribe. And uh, we'll be doing more videos on this in the near future.